Hello everyone, and welcome to the first video on the fundamentals of control systems. This is Endless Engineering, I'm Gus, and let's dive right in. In today's video, I want to start out talking about what is a control system. But before we do that, let's start by talking about what a system is. So a system can be typically defined as a set of processes that are interconnected and that take an input and generate an output, right? That's pretty generic. But if you really think about it, there are a lot of things around us that can be interpreted as systems. Your car takes in an input, then generates an output. You hit on the gas pedal, it goes forward. A lot of other things like your computer system, the financial markets, population growth, multiple things. So it's a fairly generic process, very generic definition but it can be easily applied to different things. Now let's take the example of the SpaceX Falcon 9 first stage rocket. Now I'm pretty sure that you've seen recently on YouTube or in the news those rockets and how they landed the first stage on the pad uh, on the ground and also on the ships in the ocean. Now if you think about a rocket, it typically has some sort of body and it's got its rocket engines and in this case, since we're looking at like a first stage SpaceX-like rocket, it has its aerodynamic fins, right? Those gridded fins that it has that it can move around and do things with. In this case, this rocket takes in two inputs, right? The first input is the rocket engine. And the second input is the aerodynamic fins. Right? So in this case, we have two rocket engines, maybe one, maybe more. And when you fire those rockets, the rocket moves in the opposite direction, Newton's third law of motion. And the fins on the rocket are used to manipulate aerodynamic forces and make the rocket move around. So in this case, we have engines, fins, go into some process, which is the whole rocket system, and then the output is the motion of the rocket, right? Its position and orientation in space relative to some coordinate system, right? Let's say we have a coordinate system of x, y, x, y. Well, actually, this is y, this is x, so that we can be right-handed coordinate system, right? So x, y, and z, and we have the position orientation of the rocket. Typically, this is referred to as open loop control, where I have an input, and I send it to the process, and then an output comes out. This is referred to as open loop control. I'll get to why it's called loop, not anything else in a second, but just bear with me right now. You, all you need to know is that the input has nothing to do with the output. It, uh, sorry, not nothing to do, it has no feedback from the output to fix what it's doing. It just sends that input, generates an output. Now, a lot of systems are actually like that. If you think of your washing machine, you put in the clothes, you put in the detergent, and you set that cycle. It starts, it dumps the water, dumps the detergent, does its thing, and then stops after some time. It doesn't actually check how clean the clothes are or how dirty the water is. It just does everything open loop. Some of you might have some fancy washing machines that do some fancy things, but like a general washing machine you can buy typically is open loop control. There are a lot of other electrical, mechanical systems that are like that. So this is great. We now have defined what open loop control is. But in this course, we're not only going to study that. We're going to go one step further, and we're going to talk about feedback and closed loop control. That typically has to do with the ability to measure the output, right? Say we have a sensor, and this sensor can tell us the position and orientation of this rocket. Now, we're talking about the rocket here as an example, but a lot of other things like your car, for example, you can measure the position and the orientation or heading of the vehicle, and you can do things with that. But then after I get that output, I need to do something with it, right? I can't just, okay, I got it, what do I do with it? In this case, for the first stage of the Falcon 9, the goal is to land it on a pad somewhere, on a horizontal surface, and land it vertically upright. Right, so this is the goal here is to land this rocket 
on the launch pad and have it upright. So I have a reference for this, right? So if I take this reference and I somehow combine it with whatever I have as a measurement, and we'll talk about what combining is in a second, then I take that signal, I can design this box, which is for now going to be an empty box, that will send a signal to the engine and fins. And then it can tell them, hey, I need you to fire the engine this much, now shut off, or I need you to move the fins like this and then like that, so that I can do a specific task, in this case, landing the rocket vertically. This is the controller. Should have made that box bigger, but it's okay. So that's my controller. The controller uses sensors, uses reference model, a uh, reference signal, and then says, okay, I need to generate signals to my fin and engine, which are typically referred to as actuators. And then they will act on my process and generate an output. Output. And this loop right here is why it's called closed loop control. Right? So let's recap real quick. We have a process, which is the rocket body that's positioned in space with some position orientation. We have some actuators, and these actuators can act on that process. I have a sensor or multiple sensors that are on my system, on my rocket, and they allow me to know the position and orientation of that rocket. I also have a goal in mind. I have a reference that says, hey, I need you to land at this location in this orientation, which is upright. So I can use these two pieces of information and I can feed them to my controller. And then my controller will know somehow after I design it, how to send commands to the engine and fins or the actuators to control the process. And this whole thing together is referred to as the closed loop control system. Now, in this lecture series, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be unpacking these things separately, and we're going to be talking about them in detail. So as you can see, control systems is a topic that's interdisciplinary. You need to understand physics in order for you to model your actuators and your process. In general, you need to really understand modeling. And that typically involves understanding calculus and linear algebra and differential equations because these are all systems that we typically refer to as dynamical systems, which are systems that change with time. And calculus and differential equations allow us to nicely describe those systems and study them and understand them. We're also going to need to know a little bit about sensors. We don't need to be experts on this topic, but we can slowly keep introducing new ideas and new concepts as we need them so that we can understand, oh, this is how, given a physical system, I can measure certain values. And there are certain algorithms that we could use that if there are values that we can't measure, how we can observe them or acquire them. And then we'll study, okay, given that, I need to design a controller that will generate these signals. I hope you enjoyed this first video on the fundamentals of control systems by Endless Engineering. If you're excited about this topic as I am, make sure you subscribe down below and hit that notification bell so you can get a notification every time we roll out a new video. Thanks for watching.